Hello and welcome to Willow Talk once again. Adam Peacock with Brad Haddon in the studio. And oh, Hads, this is my mm. favourite kind yep. of episode. How are you? I was really good. I had a really good morning. Uh, I took Karina out for breakfast, said goodbye uh, to the kids before I got to go to IPL. Uh, and I walked in here today and you've got a <laughs> smug grin on your face. Sam's laughing. I've been set up today. Is it, is it Ask Hads again? You betcha, buddy. <laughs> you betcha. And the best thing is we use an embarrassing old photo of you to advertise it on uh, on socials. Uh, actually, it wasn't too embarrassing. It just looked like you got back from about um, three months in the IPL because you look svelte. <laughs> it was an old photo. It isn't Ask Hads I, I meant to know that that's coming about? No, absolutely not, because then you wouldn't show up. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is our <laughs> special end of summer edition of Ask Hads. But before we get into it, a reminder that if you haven't already, please fill out the survey in the episode notes. It's all about trying to make Willow talk better for you. It takes about three minutes. And if you complete it, you go into the draw to win a $100 e-gift card. The survey closes on Sunday night, so get in while you can and let us know if we should record an episode in the SCG cellar. Yes, is the answer to that question. Kados is always, <laughs> yeah. already in. The cellar door is open. <laughs> so that's a lock. Now, a couple of uh, things that we need to tick off before we get to Ask Hads. <laughs> uh, Elise Perry, what about that poor performance for RCB and the WPL? Just six for 15 and then 40 not out in the run chase. Apart from that, she didn't contribute at all to that big win for RCB. That's an incredible performance in a T20. Well, she's a go to the, the women's game, isn't she? The, the mm. one thing about uh, Elise Perry is she's been written off a number of times, especially mm. in this form of the game. Uh, she's left out of the Australian team, but she keeps finding ways to challenge herself to, to get better. She performs under pressure. She put a ball through a car window a couple of games ago, so I hope her insurance is up to uh, all paid and ready to go. But How she, would they have taken that over there? They would have loved it. Oh, yeah? They would have loved it. It would have been the biggest story ever cool. uh, for 24 hours till this. Till this, absolutely. And Elisa Healy's team uh, got knocked out as well. So um, best not mention that for the co-hosts. Mm. And we won't bring it up when she gets back eventually. And a quick one. What about the sledge and reply between Shubman Gill and James Anderson? And Johnny Bairstow got involved here as well when he came out. <laughs> so the final test in Durham Shala, Anderson said that Gill told him to retire and two balls later, Anderson bowled out Gill. But Shubman had a few runs in the bank here. Who wins this? Oh, you Who's know, it's here? interesting because Gill was on a hundred, uh, mm. India dominating the game. And you know what? Is that a sledge to Jimmy Anderson? Retire at 41. Like, tell me he hasn't heard that a million <laughs> times and just gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicked him off. Like yeah. you, you've got nothing to gain. If, if you want to get a reaction out of Anderson, oh, I don't think that's the way. He, he would, everyone would be saying that to Jimmy Anderson for the last eight years. Mm. So he would have said, I've heard it all before, any, any, outy. Um, but Gil, mate, he's a cricketer. He likes to get in the contest. He's in the Virat Kohli mold of, of getting in the face of, of oppositions. He, he doesn't take a backward step. So, mate, he, he's seen a little in. They're in front of the game. They knew they're going to win the test and dominate the series. So... All a bit of fun. That's why I got India as favourites against Australia next summer because of players like him. Sure. No. Next. I told you that last week. <laughs> what about Johnny Besto getting involved as well when he came out too? You you got to see Johnny soon at the IPL. Oh, I you? do. So I do. So you can so, bring uh, that one up. Oh, there's a lot we can bring up. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit to talk no, about. Yeah, that that won't be uh, the first bit. That no. Uh, we're doing our IPL preview next yep. week, but how long do you give it? Because you're with him at Punjab. He's on the list there. How long do you give it before you bring it up, Lords? I'm not going to bring it up. You're not going to touch it. I'm going to see how long it takes for someone else to bring it up. <laughs> I'm going to say, I didn't even see it. What happened? Well, you've got guys like Liam Livingston as part of your crew as well. How long before one of the other English players bring oh, it up? Oh, no, there'll be banter. There's yeah. a lot of, uh, we've got Wokes, we've yeah. got Sam Curran. Yeah. yeah. And, and Livingston won't let it die. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be good fun, actually. I look forward to yeah. the report back about how long it takes. Let's get into Ask Had, shall uh, we? Uh, uh. Here we go. Here we go. And thank Why you for Why do you like this? Because... It basically asks the questions that I don't think of. Other people are doing my job. It makes the easiest job in the world for me. Like Linford Breeze, who was our first question. And thank you for all these questions. That's some great ones come through on the DMs. Hey, Hads, asked Linford. Just wondering if you can name the cricketer that always wanted to field at short leg. Oh, not many. 
No. Uh, not me. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> 2014 Indian series. Yeah. Marnus. Marnus. Marnus was like the Queensland sub. They, they come in, they run yep. the drinks for the day. Yeah, you yeah. send your, your 12th and 13th man off to, to play state cricket. And he's come on, he said, I'm the best bat pad ever. <laughs> and Is everyone, that the first thing he yeah, said? And everyone just looked at him and went, <laughs> well, you go back, go back, Pat. Anyway, next thing you know, he's died full stretch yeah. onto the middle of the wicket, taking a one hand catch. I think it's, um, might've been Aaron, the, yeah, yeah. the opening ball. I'm not sure who it was. Baron Aaron. Yeah. yeah. But he's died one hand and he said, told you. And I'm sort of sitting there going, well, if one, if you want to be in there, he's half yeah. the problem because a lot of people you play with turn their back and drop the first catch yeah. that comes their way. At bat pad. The worst thing you can do is do a really good job. <laughs> if if yeah. you haven't got world class spinners, if you're there with yeah. in line, McGill, Warren, it, it's different. You're always in the game. But I, I've seen a lot of people go in there. Yeah. I remember Michael Clark refused. He said, "No, I, I'm not going in." Who did he refuse? Everyone. He said, "No, I'm not going in." But what I will be is the best fielder in the world, so I don't have to. So <laughs> it's a horrible position. Oh, it's a horrible rank position. But the the other one, it was 2013. 14 ashes at home mm -hmm. and another sub fielder came on at fine leg. I don't quite n remember his name, but we we're working over Kevin Peterson. He's hooked it down to fine leg. Chris at the Saberg. That's him. Yeah. yeah. And if the pronunciation is right. Yeah. But yeah, that was him. Yeah. But we, so we it was out. We, we made the mistake because we we're working over Peterson to, to get him to play the short ball. So you need your best fielders there. As he's hooked it, we've looked and went, Oh, it's the sub. <laughs> <laughs> and for a minute you've gone, oh no, not as if it's a big moment. It's Kevin Peterson. He can get 200. He hates us. He's got a good record. But he didn't set his feet or anything. He's just ran in at the ball yeah. like a Paul Walton catch like that. And it's just, and he's had his hands in a crocodile. Oh, he's no. caught it. And we've all waited. And he's running in going, mate, guys, what are you worried about? I'm one of the better fielders. And we're just... But that was, we were lucky there because that was our mistake. Yeah, yeah. We should have had one of our better fielders there ready for that. But uh, well, Chris young Chris aimed up, mate. He aimed up. What's it like having a sub in that environment? Like pretty intimidating for the sub, I'd imagine. Like great experience and hanging around you guys. But you guys looking around going, who's the new kid? Well, well do you get a say in it at all? Well, or is you, it basically? What, what you do get a say in now, you, you talk to the state coaches yep. and like say if you go to, uh, Victoria, you get mm. young Mackenzie Harvey, um, Rooster McGurk, yep. um, to, to come in because they're, they're the best fielders in the country. So you, you, you sort of mm. know, um, who you got. If you get someone that just lobs up, say, oh, this guy's out in grade, he's on state contract. You think, oh no, mm. I hope he doesn't get on the field, but it, it's more of a, it's a, a tactical, um, Mate, decision now. If, if cricket's evolving all the time, yeah. if I was Australia. I'd have Jordan Silk as the 12th man for every test match. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, that might take Jordan out of a bit of cricket over summer, but you know what yeah. I mean. Like I don't think, I don't think Neeson uh, like that. He's been, he's, he's been pretty, pretty good too. Yeah. And bowling. Yeah. He's, he's, he's had plenty of practice. The poor guy. Good first question great. anyway. Very good. Linford. Outstanding. Josh Chamberlain. When was the moment you felt like you belonged in the Aussie test team? Yeah, it probably was about six to eight tests in when I got my first test hundred. Um, you, you felt like you belonged. Like mm. when, when you got there, you, you've done the, the work for in first class cricket. You had a taste of, of one day cricket and, and you're at top of your game, but it, it's the moment where you contribute to a win. Yep. Um, and, and for me, that was when I got my first test hundred uh, against New Zealand. Um, you felt okay. I, I, I've contributed to a win. Uh, I was lucky enough to, to get man of the match there, but you just felt then, and and was no other pressure. It wasn't um, your teammates or your coaches. It was mm. just in your deep down in your gut that then you felt like, okay, I've I've dominated a, a game at this level. Uh, I, I now belong. You, you get that belief in yourself. What'd you get for the man of the match? You remember? Uh, I think a little thing just to put some scotch in. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah, nice. Hayden Woodhouse, three and one, and it's a bit of a review oh. of the summer. Best player of the summer, most improved. Someone to watch next season. Best player? Best player. Oh, I'm only looking at, there's only four in contention. Mm. Three fast bowls and a spinner. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no one with a bat. Interesting. I'm going to go Josh Hazelwood. Okay. Yeah. I, I know, and, I, and I'm going to take you back. And the reason I, I say this, I'm going to take you back to the Melbourne test match. Mm -hmm. um, Paddy got man of the match was, was world class. Mm -hmm. 
But I watched Josh bowl, and and you easily could have said, mate, he could have got ten wickets there. Yeah. He, and and then he's come to Sydney. He, he fixed his length up. He got a little bit fuller. Um, knocked over Pakistan, and, and then from there he's just soared. Yeah. Um. So I'll say Josh Hazelwood. You're only saying that because he. He shortened that Sydney test so you could get to your favourite watering hole with the Triple M crew and have a stormer that afternoon. You can't remember that. <laughs> I know I walked into the baby, but I can't remember. Um, you saying Mark Taylor drunk we got. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had Paddy just in front and yep. again, uh, highlighted by what he did. And I know this isn't Ask Adam. You want one of those later, but it's not going to happen as Ask Hads. But I got Paddy just in front because of the timing of some of his wickets yep. as well. Break what about Lyon? He's, it's one of those. He, he every it feels like every four or five tests. It's like, oh wow, how good is he? You, you, you're getting constant reminders of for yourself that, yeah. oh wow, he really is a very good bowler, isn't well, he? But uh, it shouldn't be that yeah. way. I, I I think we sometimes underestimate how good Nathan Lyon. That's is. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. he he's like you. You sort of you got the three fast bowlers that then oh things aren't going well. Lyon goes boom 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 four for five for mm. he he to me. Yeah, he's he's just been pipped. Um, I probably had Paddy in third, Lyon yep. second. Um, most so, improved, most improved. Oh, they're pretty senior group. Mm. Um, is there anyone from the the white ball sphere that no, you could I, bring up? I think for me, the most improved is Josh Inglis. Yep. Oh, I think there's a real belief in his game since he, he was brought into the team in the World Cup. He, he won the World Cup. And uh, I've watched him close, um, really close, actually, since. And his involvement in the game where um, now he's confident enough to um, to create an atmosphere out there to, um, to hold the, the fielders to higher standards. He, he's batting under pressure, I, I think, taken off. Mm. Um, he, he's played different roles. He's, he's been opening. He's played in the middle order. We're still trying to figure out what his best role is. But everything they've thrown him into since that World Cup, mm. it's a big tick. Mm. And, and the it other, is. someone to watch for next season, I, I'm interested to see with Spencer Johnson. Okay. I thought you were going to bring up a New South Wales player there for sure. Well, the whole team. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's uh, Ollie Davies, um, Joel Davies, which, where do you want me to start? Uh, can be Sanger, but we'll, we'll get onto that later. But the mole thing, Spencer. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested. There's a lot of talk about Morris and, and he's been on a, a few mm. tours. We, we've seen him um, play some one day cricket, but I, I'm interested to see what plan they have for him. Mm. Because if, if you look at the 2020s and, and the white ball, that, that's the obvious way to bring him in. But if, if I was looking at his preparation now, I'd be working back from the Indian series. Because I think we need to have him available if, if something happens to one of our fast bowlers during that series. Okay. So Mitchell Stark goes down. Mm. We've got a like-for-like like, um, replacement. Uh, and I'd be very surprised if they're not working back and he's somewhere around that squad um, come the Indian series. So, yeah, he's the player to, to watch for next summer. Jamie asks, where do you rate Mark War as a batter? He's my favourite. Your favourite? Oh, I love Mark War. Yeah? Yeah. Did you pop your collar as a junior? Like oh, he mate, did? everyone did. Mate, he, he, was, he, he was as naturally gifted as yeah. any player. And he could do things that the rest of us couldn't dream of. Mm. Like the way... I, I remember batting in a shield game. And... <laughs> It was when the SCG wicket was turning big. Oh, I think Axel Foley or someone was bowling from Queens. I can't remember who the off spinner was. And they had a stacked leg side field. Yeah. And he said, just hit it through the offside. I said, I can't. It's turning too much. I, I can't get there. I'm not talented enough. He goes, what do you mean? <laughs> I just didn't understand. Yeah. And I went, I can't get it there. It's <laughs> so he's gone down and just chipped it over cover for four. Uh, Rather than just tap your um, wicket down and... and Say, so walk. He just looked at me and said, "See, <laughs> how hard is it?" I said, "Junior, I can't do it. Be ready to run. I've got to tap one just to the left of <laughs> square leg. I'm going to hit one out to the deep." He's done it again. He just goes, "See." <laughs> anyway, I tried it. Yeah, I got bold. <laughs> and, and when he came back into the change room, yeah. I, I, he goes, "How can't you hit that?" <laughs> and I, I said, "What you've got to understand is you're just." so much more talented yeah. that, than the rest of us. And I, I used to open with him um, in one day cricket. I remember a game um, 
before 2020 was mm. was in where we we put on 200 and something against Tassie in 20 something overs uh and you hit a couple of boundaries and he'd hit just one more the next over you'd hit two he hit three mm. um I, I enjoyed the the skill he had and, and you know what I love most about um Mark Walls obviously the most talented I've seen mm. Is that he would have made thirty million in IPL if he was around? Yeah, and I tell him every time. <laughs> that's that's a lot of fun <laughs> with a form grind in his hand on a Saturday Arvo if he got that in his bank. But Mark Wall is definitely the most talented. I will say, Mark Wall can know him in the last couple of years. I've never seen a man enjoy his horse because he's involved yeah. with his um, partner Kim, obviously, and yeah. her stable. I've never seen a man with so much joy in him yeah. when one of those horses win. Like that gives him a buzz. I would say, I don't know what he was like when he scored a century for Australia yeah. or Not New South excited. Wales. No, nah, nah. he's just kind of taking this. Well, he, he could have done it whenever he wanted. He's so vibrant yeah. when those, one of those horses wins. So yeah. genius. Absolutely. Uh, Jane, um, Casement wants to know, tell us your most embarrassing wicket keeping attempt at a dismissal. Oh dear. Yeah. Hmm? One day first Tassie, Bell Reef, hmm. Micah Divinuto's batting. Very talented. Matthew Nicholson's bowling. Mm-hmm. Um, Divinito skied one. So I'm I'm running. It's about halfway in the wicket. I'm going to get there easy. Then Dom Thornley from point. <laughs> you knew he gave him a middle name, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is yelled, Hads, Nikos. So I stopped. The ball bounced a foot in front of me, bounced straight up. I caught it one hand, threw it back to Nico. And I've looked to Dom. And he'd already turned and faced the other way. So it was my catch. So I, I've got to accept um, the responsibility. And after the game, um, Steve Rickson said to me, really early doors, if you ever, ever drop a high ball like that, walk off the other side of the ground. Because keepers don't practice them. Um, you, you need to practice that because, anyway, he was waiting. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What uh, did Matthew Nicholson say to you? He just looked at me. It was my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I shouldn't have listened to Dom. I hadn't listened to him for 10 years. <laughs> what did Dom say to you after He just it? turned around. He goes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what made him say that? Oh, I don't know. He, he must have thought there was going to be a collision. Okay. Um, and that, that was embarrassing. But glo- oh. gloves trumps anything else. Anything. Like, if you're yeah. under... Oh. I had it easy. Yeah. But I, I had eyes for the ball. And when he said, Hads, Nick, I thought we are about to... He wasn't watching. <laughs> so I just... Because it was an easy, easy catch. It just lobbed up. Yeah. But I tell you what, mm. it was nothing like when I walked into the Bell Reef change room and Steve Rickson's um, there with his headband, red faced. <laughs> <laughs> Spray. Oh, <laughs> good one. Yeah. But the problem was, I was in the wrong. Yeah. yeah I should have yeah. just caught it and ran through no, Nicker. You had no. You, no. you just say, I'm oh, yeah. sorry, Steve. That did, was did that work with Sampa when you go, oh, sorry, mate, my bad? Or just enraged him more? Well, no. He, he, he was all about honesty. Okay, good. And, but. There's also a time where you've got to take your medicine mm. and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard for a keeper, isn't it? Well, well it wasn't so hard then. <laughs> Ryan Van Kemenade asks, what is one thing you look forward to after a long, hard day in the field? Oh. <laughs> Lemonade? Yeah. I, I, I used to look forward to a beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, not 10, just I, I look forward to getting off, taking the strap in, um, off your fingers and just sitting there and having 10 minutes, uh, by yourself. Mm. Um, and then just enjoying a, a cold beer. And that's mid match as well. You can have a, yep. a beer. At yeah. Uh, you'd put the ice, two. you'd ice your knees up. You go straight in, ice your knees up, take the, um, strap in off to see if your fingers were facing the right direction. <laughs> and it's just that 10 minutes by yourself yep. where you just, oh, you're not concentrating because you, as a keeper, you're, you're on every moment. You, you, you need that. You've got to be on at the start of the play and, and on it six hours later, because if you drop one, mm. that can influence the result of the game. So just that 10 minutes soon as I've got off, mm. just to enjoy my own time. Worst conditions you kept in, like as in, I'm imagining it's a 45 degree day somewhere. That would be horrible. Surely. Well, I tell you, there's a, a test match. Uh, the SCG. Mm. Remember the test, um, Graham Smith broke his hand and Mitchell yep. Johnson. And there was cracks like that at the SCG. It was up and down. Andrew McDonald's playing in, and Macca hit the 120 at best. Mm. Like, But I had to go up to the stumps to him, but the bounce was inconsistent. So you'd be lining up to catch it and one would just shoot, hit in the 
shoulder or hitting the helmet. The other one would roll. Good times. Um, but you've got to stand there and trust your technique. Yeah. While in front of you, you're just thinking, oh, I don't know where this ball is going to bounce. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Blake Cudgley, best perk or freebie received as an Australian player? That's a good question. Thank you, Blake. I like these questions. Business class. Oh, business class. That's boring. Anything else? Like a hotel upgrade or, you know. No, that's it. Actually, I'll tell you the, the one you do get. Yeah. And I only captain a couple of games. Is the captain gets a suite. A suite mm. at the hotel. Yep. Yep. Like, but like the massive, massive room. When were you captain? Did a couple of 2020 games. 2020. I did. Uh, so you were, you were captain before you got there. It wasn't like the day of the game. Oh, by the yeah, way, nah. he's out. Yep. Um, the captain went, so you get, you get upgraded to the suite and I had it in, in, uh, the UAE actually. So, uh, that, that's a, that's a, they, they've got, um, no flag ins over there. Let oh, me tell no. you, mate, there's, mate, I, they have like three or four rooms. They have a lounge room. <laughs> yeah, that, Grand so, piano. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the, they're the perk. There's a lot of other little ones, but, um, mm. man, on a long flight, mate, business class is a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. But the the suite's good, especially when you um when you not that I've had a, a suite, but I've stayed in some nice hotels and you you, you face, have had a suite FaceTime home. Yeah, and you go, hey, look at this room. How good's <laughs> this? And you got the wife and the kids oh. back in the middle of winter, back in Australia, going, yeah, there's just green snot coming out of every single nose here. Yeah, and there's the laundry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mate, you haven't learned. Oh, I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah. Anyway, Luke West, most technically perfect keeper, past or present? Past. Hmm. I, I thought um, Ian Healy was the, the most pure keeper I've seen. You, you can talk about a lot of others, like uh, not Russell and, and guys like that, but hmm. I, I just thought as a technician, Healy was as good as I've seen. Like some of the balls he used to take off Shane Warne or, or, or drift in, take out of the rough, and, and to be able to hold your position, trust your technique. And the one thing he made everything look was easy. Hmm. Like, and then as a, as a keeper and a nuffy of the craft, you go, whoa, yeah, yeah. hang on a minute. Yeah. That, that, that ball's drifted into leg, hit the, the rough and then gone a, a meter past his, his bat on the outside edge. And you just take it and just the simplicity of, of his technique and the trust he had for it. Easy healing. Present. I, I tell you, he was a good technician. Mm. Also was Tim Payne. Tim Payne. Um, well, if he didn't have those problems with his fingers, he would have played a bit more test cricket. Maybe. Fair to say. Yeah, maybe. Around your era? Um, yeah, no, he wouldn't have played then. Um, <laughs> uh, Payne, was... I, I enjoyed that Payne got the opportunity to, to play yeah. some test cricket and, and lucky enough to, to captain the end and he come in a difficult time. But Nathan Lyon said that yeah, like he talked him up big style when yeah. he just had so much trust in the guy. Well, and that's one of the most important relationships mm. for, for a spinner is that they trust the, their wicket keeper. But I'm glad everyone else got to have a look at Tim Payne, even though I was only for a couple of years, because um, he's, the way he presented the craft to keep him was, was pretty good. And anyone in the, the modern game, aside from Alex Carey? <laughs> um, what about internationally at the moment? How do you think keeping's at? Nah. Not, not, no, no, no one stood out like these ones. Okay. Not yet. Cameron Paul, were there any personal battles between two guy, guys every time they played? I mean, did you have a Shane Warne, Marlon Samuels type situation with one of your rivals going on? Uh, well, I'll tell you the, one of the uh, good ones to watch yeah. was Peterson and Mitch Johnson. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Not a lot of love there? Nah, nah. They, they went at each other. And what was good about that was they were both world-class athletes. Mm. Like at, at the top of his game, Peterson was as, as destructive batsman as you'll see. Um, and Mitch, we, we know how destructive he could be with, and intimidating he could be with the ball. So mate, that when they went after each other. Was it 9 10 that they just came out here? Peterson scored a stack of runs. Yeah. Alistair Cook, we couldn't get him out. Um, Trot was yeah. unbreakable. And, yeah. and Mitch was playing then. and yeah. like. Mate, that, that, they both had different times where they won the battle. Well, there was one stage, Stuart Clark tells a story that um, he thought Peterson and Jono were going to come to blows. In Out a, the middle? No, in a, excuse me, in a warm up at Cardiff. Wow. Yeah. Tennis ball went across, missed run up. I, I don't know the story. Yeah. But Stuart Clark was there going, oh God, I've studied law degree. I've <laughs> done a um, degree in commerce. What am I going to do with this starts? <laughs> but he said the situation was uh, resolved. You'd yeah. let him go for it, wouldn't you? Just 
See who yeah. wins. Two good athletes. Who wins? Oh, John I. Yeah. <laughs> All that MMA. Mm. Uh, little breather heads. Yeah. Enjoying these questions. Oh, yeah. More to come I'm in a ball. <laughs> Suraj asks, is India a better team under Rohit or was India a better team under Virat? That's a damn good question. Mm, that is a good question. And how I'm going to answer that is I, I thought Virat changed the way Indian prepared for their cricket. Mm. That They became really athletic. Um, he held his play group to a higher standard. And he was one of those captains who said, I'm not going to get you to do anything that I'm not doing myself. And you, you've seen the athleticism in the Indian cricket team change and their mentality towards their, their feeling, um, their, their fitness, their diet when Virat Kohli took over. And that they were up for the contest against Australia. He didn't take a backward step, but the, he, he changed a lot mm. the modern game in, in India. He's a gym junkie, isn't he, Virat? He, he keeps himself in oh, okay. like a uh, triathlete yeah, fitness. He, he's, he's unbelievable. He Unbelievable. Uh, athleticism. He mm. he realised the importance of that we're in a professional game. We play eleven months of the year, and, and you need to be athletically fit to to take on countries like Australia away, England away. And mm. he he changed the way Indian cricket was played. But on the other hand, I think Rohit Sharma is tactically as good as captain you'll see. Um, yeah. He's had a lot of success in the IPL. I, I think he's captain there. Well, now, since Ricky Ponting left, actually, um, and, and that not, would have been over 10 years ago. I know it's a different time, but I, I think... this year he's not. Yeah. He's been bounced. He has. Panja. But I, I think the players play for him. Um, I, I think mm. tactically he he's um, as good as you'll get um, in, in there, in Indian conditions, and, and even um, in, in non-subcontinent conditions. So that that's the best mm. I can answer that. Just didn't win a World Cup. If you have a World Cup, no, sorry, Indian audience, short. I'm just... Had to bring that up one up. Sorry. We've got the accents we do yeah. for a reason and we love bringing those things up. Ollie, a very good question here. What do you bowl? Flipper. You what? That's your stock ball. Yeah. Your stock ball is a flipper. I've got a really good flipper. It's like, do you actually... Problem has, I can't land my leggy <laughs> to make my, my flipper effective. <laughs> so you just bowl flippers the yep. whole time. But everyone knows that now. So you're just a medium pace bowler. Oh, it's a flipper. Yeah, have you anyone, Ollie, go out and try to bowl. <laughs> I've tried, it's impossible. Yeah. But I have got a good flipper. Click it out the front. Yeah, flick Makes it out sense. the front. I can get it to swing in. But I can't work the over out yeah. to bowl a couple of good <laughs> leggies or a wrong one to get into the game. You've bowled first class deliveries? No. Bowling first great, class. Great, great game. Cricket. What yeah. happened there? What what you got Greg Mail out? What was <laughs> you remember that one pretty quickly, didn't you? He's you... had a had, had a cricket at New South Wales. <laughs> um what was the level of desperation that made the captain flick you the ball? Or you were the captain? No, I wasn't the captain. We we didn't have a spinner, so I just bowled off spinner, but I just rushed the batter a bit. And we sort of worked on a theory that <laughs> they were too nervous to take me on. Uh, so got a couple of wickets there. Shane Stanton was another one. Has a wicketkeeper ever had a reputation as a handy bowler? Tim Zura. Really? Yeah. He, he played um, for WA as a leg spinner. Yeah. Um, but Jeez. Mate, I tell you, Matt, Matthew Wade was actually a lot, a bit quicker than you think. He's just too short to get to bounce. <laughs> um, but he, he was um, he was quite quick, actually, Matthew Wade. They, they turned to him a couple of times in a test match. Aggressive, I'd imagine, yeah. as well. Yeah, the problem is, face. yeah, but if... If he was a bit taller, yeah. he would have been nasty. Really effective. Yeah, because he, he was angry. Mm. He wanted to get in the contest. He, he always used to find out what was in the middle of the wicket, but mm. um, he had to hit at his toes to bowl a bumper. But Matty, Matty Wade was all right. <laughs> Tim Zura is a, a, a blast from the past. I remember when uh, he went out of the Australian team for Ian Healy to come in, and Ian Healy got booed hard yeah, he at did. the Wacker. Like WA, yeah. They, you know, we saw it again with the yeah. JL dismissal yeah. from the Australian Test team or leaving the post yeah. as Australian coach. They don't take it well when something happens to their own. No, actually, another one off. The other one is um, Adam Gilchrist bowled in an IPL. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He took a wicket. Yeah, <laughs> Habajan Singh. Yeah. And remember, Habajan Singh had a couple of interesting um, 
post wicket celebrations against Gilly and the Aussie teams and and Gilly did half a lap of the oval <laughs> and uh, he did I think he did it like a roll. Yeah. So um, he's brought that up actually yeah, on a yeah. previous episode yeah. of Willow Talk. But so, mate, that's a good scalp. Yeah. Especially after being um terrorized for years by Harbhajan Singh. Mark Heading, who was the best grade cricketer who actually never got a crack at state representation and therefore international representation? <laughs> yeah. Well, Jack Whelan. Jack Whelan. Jack okay. Whelan from Northern Districts. Yeah. He he had a he bowled, had a beautiful wrist, swung the ball both ways. Uh he ended up being the speechwriter, I think, for Bob Carr and um Julia Gillard when wow. um that they were in. And I would have loved for him to get the opportunity to play one state game. He, he would have played for New South Wales. Oh, he, he was probably a, a late bloomer. Okay. He's very, very skillful. Yeah. Um, a little bit slow. Um, couldn't bat that good. It was slow on the field, but he had mm. some good skills, uh, with the ball. So, uh, he, he would have been, an, um, one I'd like to see get a interesting cat though, with Mate. what he ended up doing. Googling. Okay. I will. I will. Shrivats Goswami. <laughs> Young oh. Shri. <laughs> Why did you throw up doing a salt bike with Goswami in Dubai? This sounds like a... Well, uh, that's not true. <laughs> not true. Well, we can't prove this unless we get him on. Well, I'll get him on. So ex-teammate yeah, of ex-teammate, yours. Ex-teammate. He, uh, he was a teammate when I was playing. He's a young wicketkeeper at KKR when I had a few seasons there. Mm-hmm. And then when I he went to... playing in front of you, wasn't he? No, was he, didn't, he, not? he didn't play. No. Um, then... He was at Sunrises mm. as a player when I went back there coaching and it was during COVID. Mm. So I was lucky enough in, in um, the UAE, my brother was there. So he brought in a salt bike and a uh, watt bike. I had him a room, um, had a bigger room then actually. Um, mm. So he wasn't <laughs> playing a lot. So we'd do some sessions on the balcony. Yeah. Um, in and, COVID? And, yeah. How, yeah. How do you get a, an assault bike international? Anyway, go. My, my brother go. lives over in UAE. Oh, he lives there. Yeah. Right. So, okay, that makes sense. So we we just uh, killed time and he wasn't playing a lot. Mm. Um, he wanted to do something um, different because it, it become a um, hard work being in the bubble. So we'd, we'd go and um, do a couple of sessions on the assault bike. Um, mate, it might be a 20 minute session where he lasts three and a half minutes. Mm. He goes, this is too hard. Hads, my legs are stopped. I can't walk. Mm. And a couple of times yep. he vomited. The vomitron came out. I, I didn't. Vomit. So he's accusing you of it. Nah, he's, he's, it he was knows him. it was him. Okay. Yeah. And, and he was a good lad and I'm, I'm still good friends with him now, but he whinged a lot. <laughs> Next day, oh, I can't keep my legs are sore. We can't do this. Uh, I said, oh, thanks for the feedback. <laughs> but catch the balls. <laughs> James asks, what's it like with the fog on the Gabba commentary windows? What? Well, the fog only comes on the commentary windows when uh. Steve Smith's batting and Gus <laughs> Wallen <laughs> Stop it. is commentating. Stop it. Do we have to go any further <laughs> no, with that? No, we don't. No, we don't. Thank you for that question, James, <laughs> and that image, Brad. <laughs> Ryan, with a keeping question. Hey, Brad, I want to be a keeper. I don't really get a chance in juniors. How can I practice? There you go. A wholesome question. More wholesome question. Okay. For Ryan. For Ryan, yes, it's as a keeper, you need someone normally to hit your balls, throw your balls, but to, to do it by yourself. And Ian Healy showed me this. You can do a bit of golf ball work, mm-hmm. do the bit of golf ball work off the wall. And all you're doing is, is watching the ball, um, in, into your hands, getting your head and ball, um, in, in line and, and just gives you some technique work. You can do your, um, drill work off the, the ball, throwing it there. You can put a stump in front of you, throw the golf ball against the wall and, and pretend you've got a batter there and, and, and pretend you keep into a spinner. Yep. Um, he did a lot of that in the car park, didn't he? Yeah. Heels did, he, heels did a lot. I, I, I used it a lot when, yeah. say you've, you've had your session, um, mm. and you haven't quite got out of your session what you needed. So where you could go back to a car park anywhere at the hotel and what I use it for is to get my technique back to where I needed to. So mm. I left that session feeling comfortable with, with what I've done. Um, Geez, that's, it must be a look for someone going to get their car in the hotel and say, what the hell is this weirdo doing with, uh, 
well, white gloves on. Well, you only had your inners. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. Yeah, so you, you had get, your, your inners on. Where, where it would be uncomfortable if someone's trying to sleep where they didn't. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that that's one way you, you can get it. The, the other way to, like, there's, there's different ways you can do, um, is for example, my kids love doing the classic catches in the yeah. pool. Yep. And you can, t- you can use that as a, um, a, a technique. You can learn how to dive properly so it doesn't, um, mm. Um, hurt, but all those little things are, are great ways to get your hand-eye coordination. I love down the beach. You get the, you know, yep. the hard rubber balls. Yep. So it's the tennis ball without the, the fluff on the outside down the beach, yep. skim it across the surface, waves happening yep. and everything like that. And not taking a grab because you know, good. Try anyway, the golf ball on the wall. Golf ball on the wall. Fair enough. Punter 504 asks, Hey Brad, as a keeper, I get very nervous and eventually make mistakes in a game. Any tips? Do more work on your technique. Mm-hmm. The, the, the big things when you get nervous in a game, ner- nerves are good. If you got nerves for the right reason, that, that, that's really good. But if you get nervous because you're not trusting a part of your game, go back and work more on, on your technique. So when you work across the line, you're not second guessing that technique. And when you get out in the game, all you're doing is reacting to what ball's bowled. You, you don't want to be going down your crouch going, oh, I'm a feet in the right position. Is my head in the right position? All of a sudden they nick it. And you've still got noise going on in your head, and that's when you drop the catch. If if you're in the moment when mm. you're wicket keeping, you trust everything. You, I, I can't believe you, you you won't drop a catch. Yeah. But if you if you're second guessing things and, and you're not concentrating in that moment, then you'll drop a catch. Walsh Mo, best New South Wales pub story while Sheffield shielding. Some of the celebrations must have been good. And I've got one local. <laughs> I've got one actually. Good. I'm glad you do. <laughs> I'm happy. This is a bit embarrassing. Okay. Um, Who for? Me. <laughs> Go. So I think it's 2000 and 2005, six. Yep. Uh, we beat Queensland at the Gabba. Mate, we partied right through the. Um, in the final or just a regular game? No, nah, no. Nah. In the final. In the final. Um, we won nine down. Uh, huge, huge thing. We had retirements of Bevan, Slater, the Wars all that year. We're tipped to come last. Mm. Anyway. We win the Shield final. Party right through the um, night up in Queensland. Um, come back off the flight. Um, I think we went to the Wallara. Mm. Kept going. It got to the point where oh, I've got to go home. I've had yeah. enough. And I've just moved house from Lane Cove to Balmoral. Yeah. And we moved during the Shield final. Well, Karina did. <laughs> so <laughs> halfway down uh, Military Road. Yeah. I said to the cabbie, I don't know where I live. <laughs> <laughs> he said, get out. I said, I'll oh, just wait. I'll bring, he said, get out, get out. He thought I was, anyway, I got out and, and, uh, I was down somewhere near McDonald's and I rung Karina and said, oh, where, where do we live? <laughs> What's our address? I, I've forgotten all about. So I was, I said, I'm near McDonald's. I think there's a Toyota or Lexus across yeah. the road or somewhere. Can you come pick me up? And so she drove and silent yeah. car ride home. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Or well, she happy for you? Oh, she's happy that I won the final, but she couldn't really understand how I didn't know where we lived. <laughs> this is pre kids though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. No, the kids were tied to the fence with a bottle of water. <laughs> and 20 years later, you're still together. <laughs> Gee, she's lucky. Don't know how. <laughs> don't know how. Last one. Mitch Mahoney asked this one. Now, I, I, I don't know where you go with this. I don't know how you pluck out something yeah. as big as this, yep. but it's okay. I'll frame it for you. Oh, I'll ask the question first. What is a story that could top all stories? The best one yet. Now I want you to think along these lines that it's a story where <laughs> you see someone that you haven't seen in a while and immediately you start laughing or you think of an occasion and you just start laughing, giggling because what has oh. happened is so funny. I haven't got one here. Stumped you? I am stumped. Stumped but pads. You have stumped me. Okay. But I'll come back to that. There, th- this is one of the, those questions. What's the where last I'm, question? <laughs> where I'm driving. Yeah. yeah. But there, well, I've got another episode. I'll promise I'll answer this. Yeah. This is one of those questions that'll play on my OCD head. Yeah. Okay. And I'll be driving or I'll, <laughs> I'll be laying um, on the flight going to India. Yeah. And then it'll come to me. In business class. So I promise you. I promise you, I didn't say I was going to sit up straight. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
I will come up with that one. Okay. And when you come up with it, put it in the group chat. Yeah. So you'll probably forget because you like that sometimes. <laughs> we'll remember it and I won't let, and I'm like this sometimes. I won't let you forget it. All I right? know you won't. So we'll Have bring you got it a story? Up. Have you got one of those? Uh, a story that could top all stories. The best one yet. Again, put on the spot, but it's not Ask Adam, is it? It's Ask Ads. So Ask Adam, what can I come up with? Yeah. You, you've got to come, you've got to have a writer apply this as well. Oh, I took a hat trick. This is nah, not a great story. False. This is false. No, no. I took You're a hat trick in under 10s. And I did a promotion for Foxtel. They, they, they were doing a cricket theme. So they said, your greatest cricket moment. And I went, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll tell that. I brought the trophy along to the shoot and everything like that. And I went, oh yeah, um, this is my trophy. And I took these wickets, had a couple of nibble back, um, in swingers. And then for the hat trick ball, it was an out swinger. It was probably one that bounced seven times oh, before oh, the, oh, the number wins. 11 missed it. But anyway, so I brought it up and told the story and all happy. And the ad comes out for Foxtel and it says, <laughs> Andrew Peacock. That's what it said on the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't even you. Wasn't even me. It was uh, some ex I'll definitely come back to that. Okay. Too easy, Hads. Uh, that was Ask Hads. Really enjoyed that one. Oh. It wasn't too harmless, was it? Well, uh, how many of these are your family and friends? <laughs> no, I don't have friends. <laughs> and my family don't talk to me. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all people, listeners of Willow Talk. Yeah. Who we Keep love. them coming in. Keep them coming in. Love it. And we will do it again when our Hads gets back mid-year and we've got uh, some air to fill because uh, there's not much cricket happening. No. Uh, Hads, thank you for that. Uh, we've got an IPL preview coming up next week with you. Um, Can't wait for that one. But looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, take it easy. Yeah, thanks for watching the Willow Talk podcast on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't have to miss an episode wherever you are. And while you're at it, check out these videos up here. They're mostly good.